I'll just uh, I'll just uh, present this and uh, uh, maybe whatever benefit the the postgraduates uh, can derive out of it. Uh, well, our patient happens to be a forty year old man who presented with a swelling in the right thumb. And I'll show you the picture. This is the clinical picture of this patient. And you can see for yourself that the rest of the hand on the dorsum aspect is absolutely fine. There is no problem there. The problem is in the thumb and that too in the pulp area. That means it is the dorsal, uh, it, it is the, it is the uh, distal phalanx, the region of the distal phalanx, which is uh, affected. There is nothing overlying the proximal phalanx, nothing over the area of the metacarpal. So it's a distal swelling in the thumb. And this is the palmer aspect. Again, you can see the rest of the hand is absolutely fine. <clears throat> there is no problem with the rest of the hand. It is only the pulp of the hand, pulp, pulp of the thumb rather, pulp of the thumb where you have a, you have a swelling. Again, it is not extending into the palmer aspect of the proximal phalanx. For all of you, you I think you are aware that in the unlike the other digits, unlike the other digits, the thumb has only two phalanges, the proximal and the distal phalanx. So this swelling is mainly confined to the region of the distal phalanx and that too more so on the palmar aspect than there is nothing on the dorsal aspect. It is on the palmar aspect and the ulnar aspect. This is the ulnar aspect. And if you look at these, this is the ulnar aspect of the thumb, distal phalanx, which is involved, nothing on the dorsal aspect. So with this, we usually ask the patient some, some more questions. So what are the questions which need to be asked in these patients? First and foremost is, how did it start? So the, when we closely questioned the patient, he was quite clear in his mind that the swelling has been there for six months, since the last six months only, which was a little not very commensurate with our thinking, usually with these swellings. But he was, uh, he said that to start with, he noticed a small little, uh, what you call granule, uh, what you call granule like swelling. Uh, it was so small. And uh, slowly he feels that it is uh, increasing in size. So it was small initially, but gradually increasing its size and it has increased to this level in the last six months. Now, uh, this is what I was trying to impress upon you that usually these swellings are there since several years. But this particular patient was relating to the uh, fact that he has to lift uh, some sort of iron material, which is 20, 10 to 20 kilograms in weight, and his impression was that since that iron object keeps on rubbing against the ulnar aspect of the thumb, he feels it is because of that. Now, this is him, his impression. We may agree with him. We may not agree with him. But uh, he was quite firm that he has no pain. He has no discomfort. and he has no functional loss as far as his day-to-day -day work is concerned because it involves working in a factory and his main job is to put the iron bars or iron blocks on the machine. Along with this, he was 
sure that he has no similar swellings anywhere else in the body and the swelling has not been associated with any fever or loss of appetite or loss of weight. Uh, well, since we have to follow the usual sequence of examining such cases, which involves look, feel, move, and measure, there are certain pertinent points which you should uh, address yourself while examining such cases. And these, uh, on inspection, you must be able to tell us what is the location and extent of the swelling? What is the number of the swelling? Shape, approximate size, and is the overlying skin appearing normal or is it inflamed or are there any scars or sinuses there? So this sort of a description has to be there. So if you look at the swelling again, and you want to describe. So the first and foremost is that the location of the swelling, we have already touched upon it. It is primarily involving the pulp region or the palmar aspect of the distal phalanx of the thumb. Uh, and it is extending also onto the ulnar aspect. So these are the various pictures that I have taken and I have put them together. You can see that this is the crease. This is the crease which represents the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. And there is this swelling is not encroaching onto the middle phalanx at all. So it is not extending onto the interphalangeal joint, but it is overlying the distal phalanx only. And this is another view. So it looks like a solitary swelling. The other thing is the skin overlying the swelling is absolutely normal looking palmar skin and it is not inflamed. There are no scars, sinuses anywhere. It appears to be normal looking skin. Then we move on to the palpation. So if you try to feel this swelling, what are the points which you need to see? So. The first and th foremost is the local temperature, which was found to be comparable with a similar normal area in the hand or the contralateral area of the normal hand that is left hand of the thumb. So it was normal in temperature. There was no tenderness. The margins were well defined. You could when you run your finger around the swelling, you could easily delineate the boundaries of the swelling. The surface was smooth and the consistency was firm. So these were the characteristics or the characteristic findings when we tried to palpate the swelling or the findings on the concerning the section of feel. And then we come to what are the what are the points to be seen when you try to uh, decipher the section on move, look, feel, move. So in this, again, we try to pinch the overlying skin if it can be pinched, then the skin is not adherent to the underlying swelling, which was the case in this, this particular patient. We could easily pinch the skin overlying the swelling. The swelling itself, we will see in a video how it behaves when we try to move it and the movements of the thumb, whether the movements of the thumb bring about any change in the swelling itself or any change in the mobility of the swelling itself. So this is uh, what we found when we tried to move the swelling. So hold the swelling, try to move it. And then 
this was the side to side mobility and now we will be testing the vertical mobility vertical mobility so if you if we go back uh, 